Hey, my name is Marcus. Uh, I'm a applied physics PhD student at Stanford, and I've been doing this thing for a while called Marcus Updates, where I will write uh, periodically in different mediums, um, sometimes on Facebook, sometimes on Instagram, uh, updates about my life. And I've decided to, in addition to that, make a kind of vlog or YouTube channel uh, to do a similar thing, but in a little bit more more personal way. So uh, again, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Marcus Forrest. I'm a first year PhD student at Stanford, and uh, I'll be telling you a little bit about my life. So first I should give a little bit of background. Uh, so my first quarter uh, was a little bit difficult. It took me a while to adjust, and it was it was it was good, but it was very up and down. It kind of steadily got better, but it was kind of like... I spent a lot of time doing rehab for my, my hip, which I had replaced in June. It just it took me a little bit to settle down, get used to the difference between graduate and undergraduate life, um, east coast to west coast, and city to not city. I think by the end, like after Thanksgiving break, I was doing pretty well, and I Kind of figured things out a little bit better, but after the the winter break, I felt very centered and ready for the school year in a way that I don't think I was for the ready for the fall fall quarter. So uh, I fly back the next day. Uh, you know, we just had a pretty normal day. I went grocery shopping. That night, we went to play basketball, which is something that we'd been doing uh, for most of last quarter. I managed the basketball team for Temple University when I was an undergrad, and um, I love shooting baskets with my brother. I'll, I'll throw some clips of us uh, playing into the video. So I decided to form a, a intramural basketball team at Stanford, comprised of most, mostly Knight Hennessy Scholars, um, which is the scholarship that I'm a part of at Stanford. And so uh, we just said, all right, well, let's, let's keep practicing. Let's get a little bit sharp. Um, and I was excited to, to practice because I'd just been cleared for the first time to go full contact. Uh, and I played a little bit over the break and experimented with jumping, which I hadn't done in basically two to th two, two years. Um, and I was finally starting to feel good on my right side. Um, and so I was excited to test myself a little bit. Um, so we play our first game and Andrew and I lost to, to Yusuf and Zach, which is uh, unfortunate. Um, and so the next game I was trying pretty hard to win. And I went up for a contested layup. I went, took the ball from my right to lay it off the glass of the left. I was looking up in the sky and I came down and my left foot just hit right on Yusuf's foot. And I popped, uh, or I heard a pop and I sprained my ankle. So, um in true Sisyphus fashion, as soon as I got cleared to go full contact, um, the ball had rolled back down the hill and I was uh, back to square one with icing and dealing with inflammation and elevating and um, yeah, mentally preparing myself for the long grind that is rehab and PT. So that was very disappointing. Um, luckily, I, or unluckily, I don't know which is better or worse, but it was my opposite leg, um, the opposite side, the left side. So I've had two major, well, I guess three major surgeries in the last year. Um, I had a shoulder surgery in January, a full shoulder, or no, a half shoulder replacement, a full hip replacement on the right side, another shoulder surgery before the replacement, and then, um, but they were both on the right side. And so now I have a, one injury on the left side. Um, but yeah, after I had my injury, I called my brother, who's very experienced with ankle injuries, and we figured out that it wasn't broken, but it was sprained. Uh, and so I then went to the doctor and they confirmed that. And I've been primarily walking around with a walking stick since then. So. It's actually not been that bad with the walking stick. There's also a really great program at Stanford where you can take golf carts. Um, you can request golf carts kind of like Uber and take them from place to place on campus. And so that is really helpful um, or was really helpful. And recently in the last week, I've started biking places. 
um, which actually I think is helping my ankle somewhat because it allows me to kind of stretch it out, move it. Um, and I, I think that's the main problem I'm having with my ankle at the moment is just like the, the range of motion and the um, stiffness, but I should say lack of range of motion. So that's an update on my health. As far as how I'm feeling, I'm feeling pretty good outside of just being really bummed about my ankle and not being able to play in my, on my basketball team or um, just play rec with my friends. I also decided to only take one course this quarter. I think that's helped me a lot. It's allowed me to really focus on my, like my mental energy on that one course and then take the rest of my mental energy and focus just on research. Um, and I also have a new project that's helping too. I just feel a lot better. Um, it's hard to really describe, but I just have less of a sinking feeling in me all the time. I still get pretty down, or I, I, I get, experience a lot of letdown after uh, big Night Hennessy events. I think I just get so excited to see everybody, and I get a little bit overloaded, and then afterwards, when everyone leaves, I'm just disappointed that I couldn't continue conversations with everyone for the rest of, of the night, and um, so that that's a little bit sad sometimes, but... It's, it's overall quite been quite good. Concerning labs, I so the first quarter I worked with the Ian Fisher group, I had a lovely time. Um, so it's more experimental physics, or it's more like pure physics. So it's we mostly studied electronic materials. So I would uh, make this material in a furnace, you know, put in ingredients, and then heat it up at a specific temperature for a specific amount of time, and there's a lot more involved. Like I learned how to glass blow, well, not glass blow, but like uh, make a vacuum tube with the torch, which is really cool. I learned how to um, like kind of weld, but it's technically not called welding um, in order to make these really sealed capsules, which is really cool. I learned a lot about um, the way that materials change with different, um, when, when they're put in different situations, which we call phase transitions, it's kind of like, you know, the phase transition from water to ice or ice to water. Um, and, and what the Ian Fisher group does, um, or really focuses on is, is what's actually happening when a material goes through a phase transition. So it's one thing to say, okay, here it's ice and here it's water, um, but what's actually happening when you, when you uh, go from ice to water? is a really interesting question and something that uh, isn't fully understood and, and is going to be really foundational for a lot of physics to come. So I really enjoyed working in that lab, but I think there was always a part of me that was wondering if I would want to do something a little bit more applied. Um, especially being around all these Night Hennessy people, I you know saw people who had started companies or organizations for like women's health or you know an academy in Tajikistan to teach people machine learning and you know very tactile ways of, of, of changing the world um, and I think the physics research I was doing um, is really special but would definitely take a long time to to fully see the effects of my research. Um, and so I decided to do a project that was a little bit more applied. Um, and I was looking more for biophysics slash medical applications um, because I've had clearly a lot of injuries. Um, I also uh, was sick. Um, so in April 2015, I was diagnosed with T-cell lymphoblastic lymphoma, which is a type of cancer. Um, and I had like three and a half years of chemotherapy. This is just a quick recap for people who are um, new. And so I spent a lot of time in hospitals and I care a lot about healthcare and I think it would be a really neat thing to make my, um, like the, the focus of my hard work for the next five to seven years be on something that could really affect, uh, positively affect someone's life uh, within medical research or healthcare, just make, make someone's 
like a little bit better in that regard. So I, getting to my research group actually took a little bit of time. I asked a number of people. I actually had a meeting with a professor who told me a lot of interesting things about research that he had done, but said he was shifting directions uh, and that he really needed a computer scientist, not an applied physicist who was good at building things, which is kind of my forte. Uh, and so he recommended me to the Quake group um, led by Steve Quake. Uh, and so I sent him an email. I said, hey, this is my background. Um, these are the kind of projects that I'd be interested in. Like I'm inter basically, I'm interested in something to do with medicine or to do with cancer. Um, and I want to build something that no one else has done before to make something better. Um, and I kind of acknowledge that I know nothing about biology and nothing about like the research side of, of, of cancer cancer biology, um, even though I know a lot about the, the patient experience. Um, and we had a really good meeting, and he proposed a project, which I think is really cool, which is to, and of course it might not work, but it's to try and measure someone's blood counts. So um, there are two types of blood. There's red cells, white cells. Um, red blood cells and white blood cells. And it's very important uh, in medicine, but also in chemotherapy to understand how many of uh, each of these you, you have in your blood um, because white blood cells can be a marker for if you're being sick because white blood cells are what um, kill disease. And they're, they're very important for chemotherapy because they're one of the markers that doctors use to establish whether or not a patient is healthy enough to receive chemotherapy. So a typical day of chemo is to, like you, you arrive at 8 a.m. in the morning and you check in, you get your blood taken and you go to your, uh, to your room and you sit and you wait for three, four hours while they process your blood test and they check to see whether or not you have uh, the correct number of neutrophils, which are a specific type of white blood cell. It's called the complete neutrophil count. So that's even before you started, uh, before you start chemotherapy at all, it's um, just a four hour wait while you're waiting for this blood test. So um, even if you don't mind the needle, uh, which eventually I just got totally used to, um, the actual process of sitting there and waiting is frankly, a huge pain, and also is really, really wasteful. If there's a way to measure these complete neutrophil counts immediately, then doctors would be able to just meet with their patient, decide, okay, you can have chemo, give you the chemo, which itself takes an hour, two hours, and then you could leave and someone else could take your seat. It would make life better for patients um, because they wouldn't have to wait. They wouldn't have to have a needle stuck in their arm, another needle stuck in their arm. Um, and then it would also make life better because uh, you could treat more patients. And at the end of the day, like that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to treat more patients. And on top of all that, it would be cheaper for hospitals because they would need less space or just be able to have more, more patients for the amount of space that they, they have. So it seems like a super neat project. Now, how are you going to do it? One of the things that I said I was interested in doing was some sort of optical technique. So using lasers or using cameras slash like lights, um, like really bright LEDs to um, do something. And it turns out there are some people who, that are um, already kind of doing this where they take a camera and they bring it really, really close to someone's fingernail, shine a bunch of light on it, and they can actually take videos of the little veins called capillaries in your fingernail, and they can watch the white blood cells just whoosh, go through. Um, and count them. The problem is, is that these uh, veins are kind of small, um, and so your counting isn't very high. Like you get, might get 11 counts in a certain amount of time, um, and so it's not not a lot of statistics. And if you know the difference between getting chemo and not getting chemo is between six and ten, if you're only counting 11, there's some measure of error there, um, which isn't great. So uh, we're going to be trying some things differently. We're going to see if it works. If it doesn't work, 
Um, but it's, it's pretty exciting. I'm very, yeah, I'm very excited. I think a lot of times last quarter, I was very careful. I was very protective of my time. I was very careful to not just work incessantly for the sake of working. Um, and it, it's because graduate school has a lot less structure and a lot more to do. And there's just kind of endless time because you're really trying to trying to learn and build skills so that you can you can progress. Uh, and so I was very careful to make sure that I didn't uh, just get consumed by that. But I find it much easier now to spend time looking up different ways to or different papers on how people are doing this because it's something that's fun and that I deeply care about anyway. Um, not that re not that physics wasn't fun and deep and I deeply cared about it, but you know, like different ways of treating cancer would be something that I would just look up in my free time anyway. And maybe to be fair, it could be that this is just a novelty of a new research project, but um, it's been really good. It also could be just this, this transition from one, um, the first quarter to the second quarter where I just feel a lot more comfortable. Um, but regardless of the reason, the result is that I feel a lot better um, and I'm really just enjoying learning and doing work and also not doing work on occasion. And by on occasion, I mean very often. Um, doing a lot of Night Hennessy events. Um, so that, that's kind of my update. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, hit the bell icon for more notifications. Thanks for tuning in. You gotta really get these hand, hand motions in here. Thanks, we will guys. see you guys next month or probably sooner. Peace.